Hey guys, welcome back to Passing Money. Today we are going to be talking about how kids, your kids, destroy family fortune, family wealth. So this is going to be a good one because Kirby can speak from experience. He has a kid living with him in his household, actively preparing to take over. So we're going to deep dive into that. Maybe Kirby can give some uh, things to look out for. But uh, we got a couple of stories on this, so this would be good. So, Kirby, uh, what do you got on this? To me, to start off, I'm just going to say this. The reason why kids destroyed the family wealth, the family legacy, whatever, the family plans, is because of the parents. If the parents have a small business, they expect the kid to take over it. They're wrong. Uh, everybody, every parent was a kid before. And... At the genesis of it, you never wanted to do nothing that your parents did. You wanted to do something different. You wanted to pivot away from what your parents did because you thought you were smarter than your kid. I mean, your parent. So to have this idea that, oh, I'm just going to do this and then my kids are just going to take it over is a false move, especially for small business, especially owner operator businesses. You know, maybe you're a contractor, you got a small contracting business and you you have to work to make it happen. Now, if you didn't build it to a real business, you're not just owning a job and, you know, you just hold more of an administrative role, you know, you know, doing contracts and stuff like that. Yeah, you can teach a kid to do that and keep the cash flow going. But if you're out there turning the wrenches and stuff like that or doing the AC work, it's going to be harder to have your kid just do it. And the reason why is because what happens is Usually parents that's, you know, original owners, original originators, founders of businesses, small businesses, they grew up with nothing. And then they want to spoil their kids to make them believe to not have the same life that they had. And I always use the adage, I don't want to give my kid the things I never had. I want to teach my kid the things that I never learned. So and then the other part of that is. I don't want to have a business where I need to be there physically every day to have the business operate because I know that my kid and that's looking in the mirror, understanding yourself. I want to have the ability that I don't want my kid. If they choose to take over the business to have to sit there every day, especially if it's something that they don't want to do, if it's a couple of meetings here or there that they can do along with whatever career adventures that they choose to do, then that's fine. But I don't want them sitting there having to learn the trait or trade that I'm doing. That's something that I'm passionate about and push that my passion onto them. I want them to live their life and do whatever they want to do and chase their passions. And then the second thing with that is I don't want my legacy or my grandkids legacy. Forget the kids. I don't want my grandkids legacy built on if I raise a knucklehead kid. I don't want to make that gamble. I don't want to make that gamble of, oh, my kid got to make sure that everybody else is taken care of or not. So what I do is I set up the business. I set up the real estate. I set up the stock market that is on autopilot. You know, maybe they got to make a decision here or there throughout their lifespan, but it's on autopilot. The money is going to keep coming in. The money is going to keep coming in. So if they choose to mess up their life or do whatever, it doesn't affect their children or their children's children. And that's where I think a lot of small businesses and people mess up with the wealth aspect of it is because they don't look at that avenue. But Alex, what you got? Because I know you got a lot of stories about this. So go ahead. No, I, I've seen it happen, um, unfortunately, in my family, too. And I'm not afraid to say it, but I've seen it not just with my family, with other families, but whenever there's an ounce of wealth whether it be a bank accounts whether it be a house families seem to just forget that they're family at the event of death and try to kill each other to go for that property or for that bank account or whatever it might be and so i just think it's quite literal that kids destroy family wealth because like you said if the parents i guess don't um raise i wouldn't i don't know if i'd say raise but instill the proper 
education into their children about the importance of what they built for them and you know go beyond just saying hey this is just our house and actually teach them you know what they could possibly do you know what you know there's the potential of what they can do with what's going to be left to them that it can continue that family generational wealth in a sense even if it is something as small as just a house i think there's more options than just to go for each other's throats and try to sell it to get a couple dollars and then that's it and then everybody hates each other i think there's better ways to go about things but it's up to the parents to actually teach the kids you know what are those methods or ways of continuing on the uh, family portfolio or whatever you might want to call it but i've seen it happen with other families where you know they just as soon as that first generation of the family passes and leaves whatever they've got left behind or to the kids from there it's like the family is just totally separated and everything gets cashed out but it's an unfortunate thing but you know there are families that have instilled the proper education to do things differently whether or not even the proper education but um the the correct structure with trusts and um entities and things of that sort in order to make sure that the kids can't you know that they don't have the ability to go out and just try and liquidate everything but yeah i've seen it from experience what uh kids can do to a family right and just to give people an understanding of what what i did and how i set it up it's i set it up just like this i set up a family trust i set up a family trust and i picked the administrator to run the trust not my kids i picked the administrator to run it and the administrator will technically run the business as it is all of my businesses, properties, whatever, is owned in LLCs that's owned by the trust eventually. And my kids can have the access to the cash flow that comes from the businesses, from the real estate, whatever. But they don't have that ability to sell the assets that's there. Because my passion is real estate. My passion is business. You know, my kids, that might not be their passion. And I don't want to just dump that load on them. You know, one mistake I always see parents do, especially when they have two, three, four kids, they buy a house and then they say, oh, this is an investment for my kids. No, this is a headache for your kids. This is a, oh, if you don't like your kids, and I think Dave Ramsey said this, if you don't like your kids, buy a house and then die and have them fight over it. <laughs> Because that's what, that's what yeah. happens. There's no solution for that. It's just mass chaos all the time. So, again, what I do is I buy properties. I put them in entities. The entities are owned by the trust. Businesses, I buy businesses. The entities are owned by the trust. And then the businesses still run. If I'm here today, if I'm dead tomorrow, the businesses still run the same way. The cash flow gets distributed to who it gets distributed to. But they don't have that ability to do it because, again, they want to do anything. Now, eventually, let's say I grow to be 70, 80 years old, and then I have, you know, one of my children have the aptitude. They want to learn the business. They want to be in the business. Then things change a little bit. But you have to show you have the full aptitude. If, you're, if your mindset is not 100% on growing the business then you're not you're not going to take control of nothing it's not about like i didn't build this for my kids i built this for their kids because unfortunately their kids don't have the privilege of saying who their parents are so it's a safeguard to make sure that their kids are okay their job is to keep building it for their kids kids and then it keeps going down the lineage like that. I'm not sitting here to, and now if my kids, they burn all the cash flow, let's just say they get on drugs or whatever, what have you, 
then so be it. But the cash flow will still be there for their kids. But I'm not just going to sit there and let them ad hocly be like, okay, we selling this, we buying this, we doing this. If they're not in the business, if they're not doing it because they want to do it, then just enjoy the cash flow and then go on about life. But I'm not, I'm not that stupid to believe that, oh yeah, my kids want to do what I do. My kids want what I want. I just want to put them in the best position that their kids are good. And then hopefully they put themselves in a position that their kids' kids are good. And then they keep going down the lineage like that and to make it a better place for my family. I'm not a world saver. I'm my family savior. That's my goal in the whole process. With all that being said, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.